All right, guys, uh, it's Sunday. I'm in here kind of by myself. It's nice and quiet, so I figured I'd take a minute to make you a video. I'm trying to find me a pen here. Um, about some things that I feel like need to be addressed probably on a regular basis. If you have any friends that need to look at this video, please share it with them. Um, but what we end up with is where we live, there's a track that I feel like is fantastic or stellar on Thursday night and test and tune. Um, some people call it a marginal track, some people call it a bad track, but I think it's really good. There's no reason why an appropriately weighted, appropriately powered car can't go 110 to 115, 60 foot on a test and tune on a Thursday night um, with the right information and the right guidance and the right um, numbers to address suspension situations. However, a lot of people overlook a lot of the things that happen in a suspension front or rear and then they want to blame it on track prep or whatever else. So I'm going to go over kind of what happens and then how to correct it. Uh, and everything I'm going to be doing is based off of a four link style setup. Uh, the Mustang has a triangulated four link from the factory where its upper bars are shorter than its lower bars. Most aftermarket four link setups have uh, equal length bars. And so, but either way, this will apply to both of those. And I will also, I may also show you kind of how to work a ladder bar setup and possibly later we'll end up doing a torque arm setup, but not today. I just kind of want to make a short video on um, how these things work because most of the cars at a track are a Mustang or a four link setup. So if you'll pay real close attention, um, we're going to use this as our upper control arm. And then we're going to use this as our lower control arm. And as you can see, right here we have our rear wheel, we have our front wheel, we have the ground in which it rides on. And this point right here, I use this diagram a lot uh, during the day, so there's a bunch of lines already up here, but um, this is our center of gravity mark. This is, if we hung the car by a string, uh, this is kind of where the car would balance. So if we pick the car up with a string and we push on the top of the car, it's gonna nose down. If we push on the bottom of the car, it's gonna nose up. So this is where our center of gravity is. This is where the center of the whole mass of weight is. And if we push below it, the car wants to ride up on a wheelie. If we push on the top of it, it wants to nose over. Um, one of the good things about four link suspensions and suspensions in general is if we are pushing on the bottom of the car, which is what you don't want to do, uh, you end up pulling the tire off the track. You're pushing down, cars here, lower control arms down like this most of the time from the factory. So when you're pushing forward on the tire, it's driving the back of the car down, pulling the, the rear wheel up off the track. And then if, if for some reason the glue gods were there that day and put enough on the track to get your rattle trap rolling, and it does get enough wheel speed to hook up, then when it does hook up, it's gonna be pushing below this mark so it wants to drive the front of the car upward. Um, and that's generally what you end up with with a factory suspension setup, especially if you've lowered the car. It makes it even worse. Um, and a lot of times people just try to address all of this with, well, if it spins, we're gonna loosen up the front chocks and give it some more travel, which then in turn makes the wheelie situation worse if, um, if the car does hook up. So then you get a big wheel stand and whatever else. So if you're at the track and you see a car that spins one pass, wheelies the next pass, very inconsistent, 90% of the time, the problem is in this area. So <clears throat> we're gonna address that real quick. This is the rear tire, and this is um, what's driving the car forward. This is the point at which it contacts the ground, the point that the car will be um, pivoting on if it does decide to wheelie. And this is the push point. This is what makes the car go. This is, this is all we have is this contact patch between this rear tire and the ground pushing the car forward. Um, and this imaginary line from the bottom of this contact patch to the center of gravity, which is generally about camshaft height, uh, about the back of the block. Uh, if you have a turbo car, uh, of course, they're going to need a little bit more weight up front because they make a lot more power. So, that, you know, we need to front bias to keep it from William. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, nitrous cars won't need any of that. So anyway, if you get, if you take this lower bar and it's in this direction and we're pushing you tie these together. This is our imaginary push point right here. We're pushing below this line. We're pushing below the center of gravity. We're pulling the rear tire up off the ground. We're pulling the back of the car down. It's squatting essentially. And everybody says, oh man, you want that thing to squat when it leaves. That's absolutely not true. Tell them to shut the fuck up and go somewhere else. Um, they're idiots. Anyway, 
So if we take this car and we're driving it forward and our, and our pickup point is way down here where these two lines match or meet, um, you're going to end up with a wheelie situation or a spin situation depending on the track condition. Um, if it's marginal, you will get a spin situation. If it's, um, if it's very good that day, you'll get a wheelie situation. What I want to do is take all of that out, and the simple way to take all of that out is not to tie the front end down, is not to put $10,000 fucking shocks on the thing, it's not to move weight around, it's not to put your ex-girlfriend's cousin's sister two-ton Tina in the back to make it hook up. That's not, that's, we're not doing any of that. I want to take the car as light as I can possibly get it and make it go down the racetrack. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change our push point. I want the front of the car to go down. I want the back of the car to go up. I want separation here. I want the body of the car to go up. I want the tire to go into the track. I want to take this radio and crush the sidewall. If you see a fast radio car at the track, the sidewall of the tire is gonna have these freaking angled, look like saw blade marks in it from where they've been crushing the side of it into the track. And that's exactly what we want to do. So. The first step in doing that, and the most effective step that I've found, is to take this lower control arm bar and move the front pickup point up and the rear pickup point down. Now what we've ended up doing is we have a pickup point above this imaginary line. Now we're pushing above the center of gravity and it's driving the tire. When this tire tries to go forward, now we have a pivot point that makes the tire go down as it drives forward and it pushes the rear of the car up from this pickup point. So now that we're driving it forward and up, we're picking the body up, we're driving the tire down, it's rolling the car over onto the nose so it doesn't wheelie and the whole thing's moving forward together. Um, if you get to this point and you feel like it's going too fast, starts topping the shock out and whatever else, then you need to back up a little bit. Um, and sometimes you can do it by moving the upper control arm uh, just a little bit to flatten it out. However, 90% of the time, if you have a car that regardless of the track condition is being outrun by everybody else to the 60 foot, you can't hook up, you can't do the 60 foot, you can't do the 330 without wheeling or spinning or some stupid shit, it's right here. Stop buying $10,000 shocks, stop freaking tying the front end down, stop doing all that bull crap and start concentrating on what really matters where the power is pushing on the car. I, you know, I, I talk a lot of junk online with people, but my whole goal is to help everybody. I really wanna help you. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this, or you wanna know what kind of parts you need to do it, or you wanna know the numbers, I didn't really get into numbers today. I don't feel like we, I need to. I feel like you just need to kind of the gist of what you should do to get it moving in the right direction. But if you do need any of that specific advice, call me, we'll bring your car up here, we'll put it on the scales, We'll get everything measured out. I'll plot your rear end for you. We'll figure out what your, what your uh, weight distribution is. We'll figure out where the center of gravity is. We'll make the car work the way it's supposed to. I get so tired of going to the track and dingling down the street has a 490 car and knock the freaking tires off of it trying to go a 118 60 foot and then he gets online and bashes the freaking racetrack and then Right behind him comes Jeff Miller or freaking uh, Tim Kincaid or somebody like that, and they go a .99 to the 60 foot and run a fucking 396. And then this guy's like, oh, the track was terrible tonight. No, what was terrible was the fact that you can't get your head wrapped around these two little bars in the back of your car enough to make that shit go down the racetrack. That's what's terrible. But either way, my name's Rob, Rob's Rod Shop, and I will help you. Just freaking call me.